All right, so you're probably here to uh, get the scoop on how Microsoft's been doing lately, right? <laughs> yeah. There's been a lot of buzz about these uh, FY25 Q1 earnings. Yeah, their report just dropped on October 30th, so we're going to dig into that. Yeah, pull out what really matters, you know, <laughs> not just the headline. Exactly, so let's dive in. Okay, so right off the bat, they actually beat expectations. Really? Yeah, and the economy isn't exactly rock solid right now. Right, things are a bit shaky. Exactly, so for them to pull off... 16% revenue growth. Wow. Yeah. Hitting $65.6 billion. Okay. So that's revenue. What about income? Operating income climbed too. Uh, up 14% to $30.6 billion. So they're not just surviving, they're thriving. Yeah. In this climate, that's a really good sign. Makes you think of Satya Nadella, their CEO. Yeah. He keeps saying AI is going to be huge, you know, a total game changer. Right. And these numbers really seem to back that up. Yeah. It's not just growth. It's strategic growth. Exactly. They're focusing on AI, which is smart. Smart. Because it well, shows investors they're thinking ahead. Right. Not just riding the current wave, but building the next one. Exactly. It tells everybody, we're not just reacting, we're leading. Okay. So where is the AI focus really showing up? Yeah. I keep seeing intelligent cloud everywhere. That's the heart of it. Their intelligent cloud revenue is up a huge 20%. Seriously. 20% to $24.1 billion. Think about that, almost a quarter of their total revenue. Yeah, that's a big chunk. Okay, break it down, what's driving that growth specifically? Azure mainly, hmm. their cloud platform. Oh, great. And there are other cloud services too. Those are surging up 33%. So that's where they're really blowing past the competition. Seems like it, yeah. Makes sense. Their CFO, Amy Hood, keeps talking about how well they're executing on sales. Yeah, and you can see it in the numbers. They've got the vision and they're actually making it happen. Which is huge. But it can't just be the cloud, right? They do a lot more than that. You're right. Take Microsoft 365, for example. The commercial side of that grew 13%. Solid growth. And what about regular people, not just businesses? Even the consumer side of Microsoft 365 saw a decent bump, 5% revenue growth. So everyone's still hooked on Microsoft 365. Yeah, both businesses and individuals. Okay, but that's going to be more than just like the basic Office apps, right? You're thinking of those integrated cloud services. Yeah, like Teams and all that. Exactly. That commercial cloud revenue, the 15% growth there. Yeah. That tells us businesses are really relying on that whole ecosystem. So it's not just about having Word and Excel anymore. It's a whole way of working. Pretty much. Okay, so whether you use this stuff yourself or compete with companies that do, yeah. this trend is important to understand. Huge. Okay, got to talk about Xbox, though. 61% jump in content and services revenue. Oh, yeah. That's a massive leap. Got to be some kind of record, right? Huge, for sure. And you want to know the interesting part? Wait on me. That Activision acquisition that added a whopping 53 percentage points to that growth. Wow. So basically, they ate a gaming giant. Pretty much. And now they're showing what they can do. Yeah. So it's clear they're serious about becoming a major player in entertainment. Yeah. Gaming and beyond. Okay. So lots to unpack here. Oh, yeah. But before we get too carried away, there's something we got to keep in mind. What's that? This is just a snapshot, right? A Q1. Yeah. So we're getting the full picture later today. During the earnings conference call. Right. That's where we'll get their guidance for the rest of FY25. Yep. All the details. So what big moves do you think they'll be making? Well... We'll have to wait and see. Any guesses? I'm not sure. But it'll be interesting to hear what they have planned. Okay, so lots more to come on this. Definitely. We've covered a lot of ground, though. We have. Microsoft's defying the odds with that strong overall growth. Right, even with the economy being a bit unpredictable. And they are absolutely dominating in the cloud. With Azure leading the charge. And those other cloud services not far behind. For sure. Plus, Microsoft 365 is still going strong, both for businesses and everyday users. That's right. And then there's Xbox, which just exploded thanks to that Activision deal. Yeah, that's huge. So lots of wins for Microsoft this quarter. Yeah, they're doing really well. But here's the question that keeps coming back to me. What's that? They're all in on AI, right? right. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. But what does that actually mean for us? Yeah. For everyday people and businesses? Right. What kind of changes are we going to see? Yeah, will it be like totally new products or will existing stuff just get smarter that's the million dollar question isn't it we've seen the numbers we've seen the strategy yeah but the real test is how it affects our lives right absolutely so much to think about yeah this is just the beginning stay tuned for part two of this deep dive where we'll get into even more of the details yeah we'll be exploring the products and announcements that are driving those impressive results so much more to come don't miss it we'll be back welcome back did you have a chance to think about that question about 
uh, AI's impact. I've been mulling it over for sure. Yeah, it's a big one. It is, but before we get too lost in the future, right. let's zoom back in on what's driving Microsoft's success right now. Okay, sounds good. We talked about those impressive financial numbers, yep. but numbers only tell part of the story, right? Right. So let's get into those products and services that are actually driving those results. Okay, love it. Where do you want to start? Let's start with the foundation of their success, the cloud. Perfect. So I'm looking at the server products, and cloud services revenue jumped 23%. That's huge. Yeah, what's fueling that? Well, you can't talk about Microsoft's cloud without talking about Azure. Azure, right? Their cloud computing platform. Yeah, it's become this massive force in the industry. So Azure alone accounts for a big chunk of that 33% growth we talked about. Yeah, a huge chunk. Okay, so what makes Azure so special? What are they doing that others aren't? It's not just one thing, it's the whole package. Azure offers this incredibly wide range of services. Like what? Everything. Mm. From basic computing and storage to like cutting edge AI and machine learning. So it's not just storing data in the cloud anymore. No, it's about doing all sorts of things with that data. Yeah, like what kinds of things? Like businesses are using Azure to build and launch applications. Okay. Analyze huge amounts of data, run complex simulations, you name it. And even create their own AI solutions. Exactly. It's like a digital Swiss army knife. So they're constantly adding new stuff to Azure yeah. too, right? Oh yeah, continuous innovation, that's key for them. They're not just sitting back and watching the money roll in. Nope, they're not afraid to shake things up. Which is how they're catching up to Amazon Web Services. Yeah, they're not content with second place. Makes sense, okay. Azure, big deal, got it. Huge. But I'm also curious about their other cloud services. Right. Like, what are some examples and how are they contributing to that growth? Well, think of it as this whole ecosystem of services that work with Azure. Okay. So you've got Microsoft 365, which we talked about. Right, which is way more than just basic office apps now. Exactly. It's yeah. this whole suite of cloud-based tools for productivity. So email, file sharing, video conferencing. All of that. Yeah. And we saw how well both the commercial and consumer sides are doing. Right. So they're winning with businesses and individual users. Okay. So what does that actually mean for people using these tools? It means they're getting what they need right. Seamless collaboration. Remote work accessing files from anywhere. Yep. All that stuff that people need these days. And Microsoft 365 is delivering. Exactly. Which is why it's doing so well. Okay, speaking of meeting user needs, what about Xbox? Oh, yeah, good. Well, we know the Activision deal was huge. 61% revenue growth. Can't argue with that. But what about their existing Xbox content and services? Are those growing too? Absolutely. Their subscription service, Xbox Game Pass, has been a massive success. Oh, yeah, Game Pass. Think of it like Netflix, but for games. You pay a monthly fee and get access to a ton of games. Exactly, and it's attracting millions of subscribers. I've heard things about it. Yeah, it's a great deal if you like to try a lot of different games. So it's smart for Microsoft too, right? Yeah, they get that recurring revenue. And they build up a loyal community of gamers. It's not just selling consoles anymore. It's a whole gaming experience. Makes sense. Okay, so we've got Azure, Microsoft, 365, Xbox, yep. all playing a big role in their cloud dominance. He's huge. But got to be more to the story, right? There's always more. What other products or services should we be paying attention to? Well, one area we haven't touched on is Dynamics. Dynamics. Yeah, their suite of business applications for like ERP and CRM. Okay. I know a few businesses that use Dynamics. For good reason. It helps them streamline everything. Finances, customer interactions. All of it helps them run more efficiently. And the report shows that Dynamics is doing really well. Yeah, 14% growth in Dynamics products and cloud services. And Dynamics 365 specifically was up 18%. So, yeah, not too shabby. So the key takeaway here. What's that? Microsoft's success isn't limited to just a few star products. Right. They've got a deep bench. Exactly. Yeah. And that's how they're meeting the needs of so many different customers. Mm -hmm. So they're not putting all their eggs in one basket. Exactly. Okay, so they're a tech powerhouse with a finger in almost every pie. And they're doing well. But we can't forget about the competition. Oh yeah, the competition is fierce. Microsoft isn't operating in a vacuum. Not at all. So let's talk about that competitive landscape. Okay, sounds good. Who are the major players they're up against and how are those battles playing out? Well, in cloud computing, their biggest rival is definitely Amazon Web Services. AWS, right? The other yeah. cloud giant. Yeah, it's a real clash of the titans. So AWS has been the market leader for a while. Yeah, for quite some time. But Microsoft's closing the gap. Quickly with that strong growth in Azure. It's like a David and Goliath story. Right. 
But this, David's got a lot of resources. And a knack for innovation. Exactly. And the customer's benefit. How so? Well, it means lower prices, more innovative services. I always love a good competition. It pushes everyone to be better. But it's not just AWS they have to worry about, right? Nope. Google's in the mix, too. With Google Cloud Platform. GCP. That's right. They're not the same level as AWS and Microsoft yet. Not yet, but they're gaining ground. So it's a three-horse race. Pretty much, yeah. With Microsoft aiming for the lead. AWS trying to hold on. And Google trying to catch up. Exactly. It's a very dynamic market. And the competition doesn't end there, right? Nope. You've got productivity software. Right. Google Workspace, Apple iWork. Yep. And in gaming, you've got Sony's PlayStation. Which is still a big competitor to Xbox. Absolutely. Okay, so with all this competition breathing down their neck, how is Microsoft responding? Good question. Are they reacting to their rivals or are they forging their own path? A bit of both, honestly. Okay, so what's their strategy? Well, they're keeping a close eye on their competitors, for sure. Makes sense. But they're also making bold moves. Like the Activision deal? Exactly. It shook things up. So they're playing offense and defense at the same time. Yep, that's a good way to put it. It's like they're playing chess on multiple boards. Trying to stay a few steps ahead. So they're defending their existing markets oh, right. while also pushing into new territory. And what's a key part of that expansion? AI. Bingo. They see AI as the next big wave. And they're investing heavily. They're weaving AI into everything they do. So they're battling their rivals in the present. While also building the weapons they'll need for the future. Very strategic. Right. So this raises some big questions. Yeah, like how will this AI-powered future unfold who will come out on top and what will it mean for us big questions for sure we don't have all the answers yet but it's exciting to think about the possibilities it is and speaking of getting a glimpse into the future yeah remember that earnings conference call oh yeah the one that's happening right now it's about to start okay they're going to be sharing a lot more detail about their q1 performance and their outlook for the rest of fy25 this is where we get the inside scoop that's right so what are we hoping to hear well they'll be laying out their priorities Oh. Talking about the challenges they're facing. And their vision for the future. Exactly. We'll be listening for any clues about how they plan to leverage AI. Navigate that competitive landscape. And ultimately shape the future. I'm ready. Me too. So we'll take a quick break to tune into the call. Right. But don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon with a full report. And we'll break down what it all means for you. This is where the deep dive really begins. All right, we're back. And wow, that earnings call. Yeah. It was a lot to take in. They really packed it in. So much information. Dense, but good. Yeah, we got a much clearer picture of their priorities now. For sure, and some of the challenges they're facing. And a glimpse into the future, too. Definitely. OK, so let's break it down for our listeners. Sounds good. What were the key takeaways, the yeah. stuff everyone needs to know? Well. The biggest thing is definitely their commitment to AI. Yeah, Satya Nadella didn't hold back on that. He was very clear, AI is not just a trend. It's a fundamental shift. Yeah, exactly. So they're not just adding a sprinkle of AI here and there. Nope, they're going all in. Seeing it as this transformative force. That's going to change everything. Work, learn, play. The whole nine yards. And they want to be leading the charge. Absolutely. OK, so how are they actually doing that? How are they turning that vision into reality. Well, lots of ways. Yeah. They're investing a ton in AI research and development. Okay. They're buying up AI companies left and right. They're putting AI into all their products and services. We saw that with Microsoft 365. Right, they talked about that on the call. It's like they're making AI accessible to everyone. Exactly, not just the tech experts. Yeah, it's not some distant future thing anymore. It's here, it's now. Pretty exciting stuff, but they must be facing some challenges too. Oh yeah, for sure. Every big leap comes with hurdles. So what did they talk about on the call? One of the big ones was responsible AI development. Okay, so making sure AI is used ethically. That it's used for good. They emphasize that a lot. Makes sense, it's a powerful tool. It needs to be used wisely. It's good that they're thinking about the ethical side of things. Yeah, they're not shying away from it. They're acknowledging that AI has potential for both good and bad. Absolutely. And they're actively involved in those discussions about AI ethics. Trying to figure out the guidelines. Exactly. It's not just progress at all costs. OK, so that's the ethical side. Right. What about business challenges? What are they grappling with? Well, they talked about competition. In the cloud market. Yeah, that came up a lot. AWS and Google. Tough competition. So how are they dealing with that? By constantly innovating, oh, yeah. expanding their cloud offering. Trying to stay ahead of the game. Yep. 
It's a concert race. No time to rest on their laurels. That's the tech world for you. But they seem confident. Yeah, they projected a lot of confidence. Like they can compete and win. In the long run. And their Q1 performance backs that up. Okay, so they talked about their outlook for the rest of FY25. And they did. What should we be keeping an eye on? Well, they expect continued growth in the cloud. Driven by Azure. And those other cloud services. Okay, and what else? They're also investing in new areas. Right. The metaverse, gaming. So they're not just focused on the present. Nope, they're thinking about the future. Looking for the next big thing. Exactly. They're not afraid to take risks either. Which keeps things interesting. So to wrap this up. Yeah. Microsoft is a company on the move. No doubt about it. They're embracing new technologies. Battling competitors. Shaping the future of tech. In big ways. But the big question is. What does it all mean for us? Yeah. How will these innovations affect our lives? Our work. The world around us. It's the question we've been exploring all along. And it's something we should all be thinking about. This deep dive has given us a lot to think about. For sure. And I have a feeling we'll be revisiting these questions as Microsoft continues to do its thing. This is just the beginning. It is. So that wraps up our deep dive into Microsoft's FY25 Q1 earnings. Hope you found it helpful. We'll be back soon with another deep dive. Into a whole new topic. Until then, keep exploring, keep questioning. And keep diving deep. Stay curious out there, folks.